Prince William recalls dark days of grief at Balmoral after death of Princess Diana. The future king gave an opening address at the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland on Saturday. He described Scotland as a source of some of my happiest memories but also my saddest. It was at the University of St Andrews in 2001 that, as an 18-year-old undergraduate, he met Kate Middleton, and their romance blossomed two years later. But it was at Balmoral the Aberdeenshire estate house owned by Queen Elizabeth II, that he learned of Diana's tragic fate in 1997. The Duke of Cambridge, 38, is also known as the Earl of Stratern in Scotland. He told the Assembly, Scotland is a source of some of my happiest memories but also my saddest. I was in Balmoral when I was told that my mother had died. Still in shock, I found sanctuary in the service at Craddy Kirk that very morning and in the dark days of grief that followed I found comfort and solace in the Scottish outdoors. As a result, the connection I feel to Scotland will forever run deep. Alongside this painful memory is one of great joy because it was here in Scotland 20 years ago this year that I first met Catherine. Needless to say the town where you meet your future wife holds a very special place in your heart, George. Charlotte and Louis already know how dear Scotland is to both of us and they are starting to build their own happy memories here too. Williams comments two days after he criticized BBC failings after an inquiry found the broadcaster covered up deceitful behavior by journalist Martin Bashir to land his bombshell panorama interview with Princess Diana. In a statement, he spoke of his indescribable sadness to know the BBC's failures contributed significantly to her fear paranoia and isolation that I remember from those final years with her. He said, but what saddens me most, is that if the BBC had properly investigated the complaints and concerns first raised in 1995, my mother would have known that she had been deceived. She was failed not just by a rogue reporter, but by leaders at the BBC who looked the other way rather than asking the tough questions. It is my firm view that this panorama program holds no legitimacy and should never be aired again. It effectively established a false narrative which, for over a quarter of a century, has been commercialized by the BBC and others. This settled narrative now needs to be addressed by the BBC and anyone else who has written or intends to write about these events.